In this video, we will cover the presidency of John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society. Kennedy won a narrow victory in the 1960 presidential election against Richard Nixon. JFK would have to deal with high Cold War tensions and civil rights before being assassinated in his third year in office. Lyndon Johnson, as vice president, would take over as president, vowing to continue Kennedy's legacy. LBJ created a set of programs aimed at ending poverty and racial injustice. Eisenhower gave the CIA permission to train Cuban exiles to overthrow communist leader Fidel Castro. JFK learned about the plan nine days after his election. He went ahead and approved it. Everything that could go wrong did. On April 17, 1961, 1,500 Cuban exiles supported by the U.S. military were captured by 25,000 Cuban-backed tanks and aircraft. JFK was so embarrassed and lost faith in the Pentagon and the CIA. After the Bay of Pigs fiasco, USSR Prime Minister Nikita Khrushchev supplied Cuba with weapons, including nuclear missiles, that could reach the U.S. within minutes. An American U-2 spy plane takes this photo as proof. JFK tells the nation about the missiles and his plan to remove them. He orders the U.S. Navy to quarantine or blockade the island of Cuba. Any ship crossing the blockade would be an act of war. He also warns the Soviet Union that any missile attack from Cuba would trigger an all-out attack on the Soviet Union. This type of policy was known as mass retaliation. Soviet leader Khrushchev backs down and removes the missiles with Kennedy's promise to never invade Cuba. The U.S. also removes nuclear missiles from Turkey, aimed at the USSR. This is the closest we got to World War III. One of JFK's goals was to win the space race with the Soviet Union. The Soviets had the first satellite, Sputnik, and the first cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, in space. JFK knew that if we wanted to keep up with the Soviet Union in science and technology, we, we had to not only keep pace with them, but pass them. In his now famous speech given at Rice University, he challenged the nation to do what no one thought was possible, land on the moon. Seven years later, on July 20th, 1969, we did just that. Universities expanded their science programs. There was a huge federal funding for research and development, which gave rise to new industries and new technologies. Space and defense-related industries sprang up in southern and western states. NASA inspired a generation. Unfortunately, JFK would not live long enough to see his challenges fulfilled. After taking office in 1963, LBJ promised to wage war on poverty. He created the Economic Opportunity Act with a billion-dollar budget. It sponsored a wide variety of self-help programs for the poor, such as Head Start for preschoolers, the Job Corps for vocational education, VISTA, Volunteers in Service to America, and the Community Action Program, which encouraged poor people to participate in public works programs. A major accomplishment of the Great Society was the expansion of health care coverage to more Americans. The Medicare program, providing hospital and medical insurance for Americans aged 65 or older, was signed into law as an amendment to the Social Security Act of 1935. Some 19 million people enrolled in Medicare when it went into effect in 1966. Medicaid, a state and federally funded program that offers health coverage to certain low-income people, was signed into law by President Johnson on July 30, 1965, as another amendment to the Social Security Act. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act represented a major commitment to equal access to quality education. The ESEA funds primary and secondary education, emphasizing high standards and accountability. Funds are authorized for professional development, instructional materials, resources to support educational programs, and promoting parental involvement. The act was signed into law on April 9, 1965, and its appropriations were to be carried out for the five fiscal years. The government has reauthorized this act every five years since its enactment. LBJ also signed the Higher Education Act in November of 1965. The act governs federal student aid, increased federal money given to universities, created scholarships, gave low-interest loans to students, and established a national teacher corps. The Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965, also known as the Hart Seller Act, abolished an earlier quota system based on national origin and established a new immigration policy based on reuniting immigrant families and attracting skilled labor to the United States. 
Over the next four decades, the policies put into effect in 1965 would greatly change the demographic makeup of the American population, as immigrants entering the United States under the new legislation came increasingly from the countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America instead of Europe. LBJ also created two new cabinet departments to help in specialized areas. The Department of Transportation was created to deal with national air, rail, and highway transportation. The Department of Housing and Urban Development was created to administer federal housing for the poor. The federal government provided funding for worthy creative and scholarly programs during the Great Society. It helped to establish the National Endowment for the Humanities, an independent federal agency dedicated to supporting research, education, preservation, and public programs in the humanities. The National Endowment for the Arts is another federal agency that offers support and funding for projects in exhibiting artistic excellence. PBS, or the Public Broadcasting Service, is a nonprofit organization that provides educational television programming to public television stations around the country. It is funded by both the federal government and by private donations from citizens. Its most notable program is Sesame Street, which has provided children with educational programming for over 50 years. NPR, or National Public Radio, is a private and publicly funded nonprofit media organization that provides news and educational programming on the radio. LBJ, like Teddy Roosevelt during the Progressive Era, wanted to protect consumers with the Great Society. After a study released in the early 1960s linked cigarette smoking to cancer, Congress passed the Cigarette Labeling and Advertising Act. It provided a set of national standards for cigarette packaging. It required tobacco companies to put a warning on the package about the dangers of smoking. Congress also passed the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act, which required labels on consumer products to include the identity of the product, the name and place of the business of the manufacturer, packer, or distributor, and the net quantity of the contents. The federal government also passed the seatbelt law, requiring all vehicles to be fitted with seatbelts in all designated seating positions. Even by the 1980s, only 14% of Americans regularly wore seatbelts. The Supreme Court during the 1960s was known as the Warren Court, named for Chief Justice Earl Warren. It expanded civil rights, civil liberties, and federal power in many ways. It has been widely recognized as a constitutional revolution. Among the many decisions of the Warren Court concerned a defendant's rights. First, in Mapp v. Ohio in 1961, Dolry Mapp was convicted of possessing obscene materials found in an illegal search of her home. The Supreme Court ruled that illegally seized evidence cannot be used in a court against the accused. In Gideon v. Wainwright in 1963, Clarence Gideon requested a, a lawyer from the state to defend him against charges of breaking and entering. The state refused. The Supreme Court required that state courts provide an attorney for indigent or poor defendants. In Escobedo v. Illinois in 1964, Danny Escobedo confessed to murder after being refused the right to see his lawyer. The Supreme Court required the police to inform an arrested person of his or her right to remain silent, and they have the right to see their attorney. In Miranda v. Arizona in 1966, Ernesto Miranda confessed to kidnapping and rape. The police did not advise him of his right to an attorney during the investigation. The Supreme Court extended the ruling in Escobedo to include the right to having a lawyer present during questioning by the police that the police must inform the defendants of their rights. This is known as the Miranda Warning. These decisions of the Warren Court deal with freedom of expression and privacy. In Yates v. the United States in 1957, the Supreme Court states that the First Amendment protected radical and revolutionary speech, even by communists, unless there was a clear and present danger to the safety of the country. In Engel v. Vital in 1962, the Supreme Court ruled that state laws requiring prayer and Bible readings in public schools violated the First Amendment's provision for a separation of church and state. In Griswold v. Connecticut in 1965, the Supreme Court ruled that in recognition of a citizen's right to privacy, a state could not prohibit the use of contraceptives by adults. This privacy case will provide the foundation for later cases establishing a woman's right to an abortion.